Hello, in this video I will show you how to create a Bezier curve on Python. I am using PyCharm for IDE and I think that is all you need to know. So let's start. I will be referring to this book called An Introduction to NURBS with a Historical Perspective by David Rogers. The link is in the description. Here you can see the mathematical expression for Bezier curve. P is the equation for the Bezier curve. You can see that it depends on T and this is the parametric variable because this is a parametric equation. It is the sum of value B times J. And B is going to be the coordinates for our control points. So now in this other equation, you can see that J is equal to this weird looking parenthesis times T times a parenthesis. Now, Everything besides that weird looking parenthesis is, the is called the basis function. And the parenthesis is called a uh, binomial coefficient. And you can see here is the equation for the binomial coefficient. So it's not that bad, it's just a couple of binomials. Now I will go into how this translates to a Bezier curve uh, during when we are writing the code. So now let's go to Python. First of all, let's call the libraries we will be using. So it will be NumPy as NP and Matplotlib as PLT. I am assuming you're familiar with these two libraries because I am not the correct person to explain them to you. So I will be adding links to the documentation for both libraries regardless. For the control points, I will create them randomly using the numpy random sample function. So for x, y, and z, it's going to be the same thing. np.random.random underscore sample. And inside parentheses, we need to give a tuple. For now, uh, I'm just going to select three points. If you want a different number of control points, you can change them here. Next, we will specify the grid refinement with the variable cell. Here you can specify how many points uh, the Vesel curve will have. More points equal a finer curve, but more computing time. So it's not so drastic here because we're dealing with small uh, control points, but just keep that in mind. Now we can go ahead and declare some other variables before tackling the main equations. The number of control points will be obtained by looking for the number of items in X, Y, or C by using mp.size. For the binomial coefficient, we will need n and the variable i. n is basically the number of segments between control points and that will always be one less than the number of control points. So we're going to call it ncpts, the number of control points, minus one. Variable i is a counter that goes from 0 to whatever n is, but for now we just set it as 0. Next, we set up the parametric variable t, which will go from 0 to 1, and the number of um, numbers in between is specified by the cells variable. So by using lean space, we can create that list of numbers for t. The next one, you don't necessarily have to write it, but I want to make a point further in the video, so b is equal to an empty array for now. Lastly, we need to initialize arrays for x, y, and c values of the Bezier curve. We can use the zeros function to create an array of zeros with the number of items being specified by cells. So you can see that t and these arrays are the same size, not a coincidence. Now let's go over the code's layout because we can simplify things a little here. First, we are going to create functions for the binomial coefficient and the Bernstein basis functions individually. Then we create the main loop where these functions will be called in order to calculate the Bezier equation. So binomial coefficient, uh, def, I, I will call it ni because that is what the book calls it. And it will take n and i as arguments, don't forget the colon. And we want to return the result of the following equation. np dot factorial of n divided by the factorial of i times the factorial of n minus i. And that is done. Now the Bernstein basis function is the same. And the arguments will be n, i, and t. We want to return the result of the binomial coefficient times the standard basis function. You can see that this function depends on the function for binomial coefficient. That is why we write it. We write this one after the one for the binomial coefficient. And with that out of the way, it is time to tackle the most important part of the code, which is the main loop. So you need to understand that the Bezier curve is a sum. It will update for every point, but what exactly will be updated? 
Let's go back to the equations. You see here the binomial coefficient and Bernstein basis functions. I struggle to say that every time. You can see that both depend on i, which is a counter that goes from 0 to n. So at each loop, these values will be different. Then we have the coordinates for the control points multiplying this whole thing. And since we are looping for every one of these, they will be different every loop. In the end, this whole multiplication will, will result in a curve that has a bias reflective of the respective control point. So all we have to do now is sum the results of all these biases. Each loop will add a new point and update the final curve. The loop will be uh, j in range from 0 to whatever the number of control point is. This part is the standard, we just count, we just loop for every control point. These biases or weights come from the basis functions and that can clearly be seen by plotting them. So that is why I created that B array before because I want to use it to store the results calculated by the functions, by the ba function basis when it is called every loop. The Bezier curve will be equal to that basis function we created earlier times the respective control point and the most important part, add the previous result for the Bezier curve. So we will do this for every coordinate, repeat it for y and z too. And lastly, increase the counter by 1. Plotting each row of the B array with T using this uh, beautiful code that I did not plagiarize from Stack Overflow like a bad programmer. Here you can see that the number of lines match the number of control points first. And then that there are three peaks or when the curve is equals to one, here is where the control point has the most influence over the curve. Take a look at the left side of the graph, the line or the blue line, which represents the first control point starts at one while the rest starts at zero. This means that that control point has an absolute influence over the curve. And this is why the curve starts at that point. Same with the last control point or the green line at the right hand side. On the other hand, the middle control point shares the influence of the curve at its peak with small contributions from the other points. As you can see, when the orange line is one, the other lines aren't really zero. And yeah, that is basically it. Remember that this is in 3D, so if you want to 2D, delete every line that introduces C. So I copied another code for plotting because I genuinely cannot understand Matplotlib, so I won't explain this part. Here, observe the greatness of the Bezier curve. We can increase the number of control points and it becomes even greater. If you want to use your own values, replace these lines with your own values for X, Y, and Z, specify the number of cells, and that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video was useful to you, you learned something, and not only copied the code, but you can do that anyways, whatever you want. Anyway, bye.